Hi, welcome to the Yiddish Bake Off Bubbles. Today we're going to be doing some knishes. Right now I'm just starting off with peeling some potatoes. For those of you who've never had a knish, it's kind of like a mashed potato pie instead of a meat pie. It's a self-contained little pocket of joy and it is made with schmaltz. Schmaltz is like rendered chicken fat or in this case I'm using duck fat. It is pure liquid gold. So it is going to be a very savory and very delightful snack today. I just have to peel a couple pounds of potatoes here and then we will be right back once I have a couple more potatoes peeled out. Okay. All right, and here we are finishing up our last potato of the bunch. You're just going to want about two and a half pounds of them for roughly 16 knishes. Now, I don't know about many of you others out there, but I am not a huge fan of peeling potatoes. So if you really want to, you can use the store-bought mashed potatoes in the uh, pre-made section, usually by the rotisserie chickens. Uh, they're pretty good. Uh, just careful not to get the ones that have uh, loaded baked potato or the ones with the cheese in them, because otherwise it's going to uh, throw off your ratios. Now I'm just going to give a quick little chop chop just to get these so they boil up faster. The onions for the potatoes. So while everything's cooking, the next stage is going on to the next one. So everything will all be ready at the same time. Have you guys ever had duck fat in your food, like potatoes or anything? It's really nice. So we're going to start making the dough for our knishes. Something fun about this dough is we're going to be adding a little vinegar to it because that's going to relax the gluten strands in it, making it a lot more supple. So it's almost going to be like a strudel dough, which uh, helps it when you roll it out or stretch it out. And then you can roll it into this beautiful, beautiful uh, faux flaked crust. So right now we're going to just get a couple of cups of flour in here. About two and a half cups. And then we're going to add some kosher salt. I always just eyeball the kosher salt. If it's a pinch over, a pinch under, it, it doesn't affect that. We're going to have a little bit of baking powder. This will help with the uh, puffing out of the pastry. Now, you don't need much. You just need a little bit. A little goes a long way. So I'm just adding a teaspoon of this. Ooh, it's a little dry. quarter cup of that schmaltz. I happen to be uh, using some uh, duck fat. I, uh, yeah, we have some lovely duck fat that you can pick up at Whole Foods or you can get on Amazon. Uh, there's also the Fat Co. or company that has beautiful fats. You can get rendered beef fat, chicken fat, duck fat. Uh, this one I'm using is Epic Rendered Duck Fat. Uh, that company, I guess, is the Epic brand. And as you can see, it's a little bit of milky. If you refrigerate it, it turns pretty solid, so you can scoop it that way. Uh, one of my favorite things is just to have duck fat potatoes or duck fat eggs. Uh, pretty yummy stuff. So I'm just going to be pouring in a little bit there. Add that to our mix 
vaccine bowl. Making sure I didn't lose anything. And a little bit of vinegar. And if you don't want to use vinegar because you don't want, uh, if you're worried about an acidic flavor, you can actually use a shot of vodka. Uh, you might not use a full shot, but just a, a couple spoonfuls will be enough to relax that gluten there. I just have some onions that I'm going to be cooking down over a modest heat. And as you can see next to me, I have the potatoes going, so everything should hopefully be done around the same time. And that gives the dough plenty of time to rest and let that gluten get nice and relaxed. And this will take just a few minutes. We have some really nice caramelized onions. The sugars have converted and you have that lovely browning effect. And now that those are done, you can see the potatoes are nice and soft. So it is looking like it is time to mash. And here we're just going to add our onions to our potatoes. And then the only other thing we really need to add is some sour cream and salt. And we should have a lovely little mashed potato to go in. Now if you do want some extra oomph, you can add some shredded cheddar cheese. I just think that it doesn't need it because it's already got so much fat in there. Now I'm just adding some sour cream. About a, about a cup of sour cream. Time for a taste test. Needs more salt. And we have potato. All right, so what we're gonna do now that everything has cooked evenly and the dough is rested, is we're gonna divide it in half and roll it out to be essentially a half sheet pan size, which is about a baking tray size, your standard baking tray. So let me make sure this dough is nice and even. Cut it in half. And then we're gonna do this uh, essentially twice. We're going to roll it out, get our potato filling, roll it up. And again, these sil silicone mats are fantastic for this because nothing sticks to them. And because of all that lovely fat and the ren rendered duck fat, it's not really sticking to the rolling pin at all, as you can see. It's nice and sheen and smooth. And this dough, it lifts up pretty nicely. And just keep rolling it, it will get there. If it does stick a little bit, you can add flour. And if you do get tears, just fold it back over and roll it again. Like out here, as an example, let me get a little tear here. Oops, put it right back over. Bingo, disappears. Okay, now that we have that, we're gonna add our potato filling. So what I'm going to do to start this rolling is I'm actually going to use the mat to start this roll up, give it a little bit of structure, and I can actually use it to press in the form, and that way I can continue rolling it on. See how that folded over nicely? Then I'm going to go over again, and I'm going to treat this just like a strudel. I'm going to roll it over. And now I have a nice little round cylinder. Time to cut our little knishes. So what I like to do is I like to just cut them evenly, halves, and then half again. 
up, I will show an example of how I like to wrap these. I like to take the pinched end and I sort of mush it in together. It's a little bit gooky on you, but what I'm going to do here is we're going to take our little knishes. I'm going to kind of prop them. I'm going to make sure that they're kind of rounded out and take pinch side down. Okay, and now we'll just head over to the oven. We'll bake those are about 40 minutes and until the crust is golden brown. And uh, there is an option to do egg wash. I don't think it needs it, but if you do like it a little bit shiny, you can add some egg wash. Temperature 350 degrees. My Better Homes and Gardens vintage cookbook, and we are going to be making some crepes today. The crepes are going to be used then to make blintzes. So to start off, we're going to be taking a cup of flour. And I'm using a blender for this because it makes it really smooth. Otherwise, uh, if you're using the whisk, I suggest that you strain it out because you do not want flour lumps in your crepe. Now you're going to notice there's a high ratio of milk to this. To the one cup of flour, you're going to have one and a half cups of milk. Because this is going to be a really thin batter. I'm going to add a couple eggs, which will give it nice structure and add some fat to it. Pinch of salt. Just a tablespoon of oil. This will help keep it nice and smooth and flexible. And I'm going to just ask my lovely assistant to hand me uh, sugar that's right over there. Okay. And we just add a couple tablespoons of sugar for browning. It doesn't so much add too much sweetness, but it really does help the browning of the blends or crepe in this case. because you can easily see inside and see where the flour clumps up. The cheese filling for our blintzes. I'm doing a combination of farmer's cheese, cream cheese, and ricotta. And I'm going to be adding some almond flavor to that with a little bit of sugar. Here we go. Farmer's cheese is kind of like a dry 
cottage cheese. It's mm -hmm. it's nice. It's it's rich. It, it's fairly dry. You can get. I got this at Price Right. You can often get it at Stop and Shop. Mm -hmm. um, you might just have to call around, or uh, you can even use phone apps for shopping to see what's local. Uh, that's how we found out using a phone app uh, where we got our farmer's cheese mm -hmm. today. This is ricotta. I'm going to sprinkle in about half a cup of sugar. Mix it up and then let it sit for a few to let that sugar melt and then mix it some more. Almond flavoring. Mm -hmm. Gives it a real nice classic taste. You want to add a half a teaspoon of almond flavoring for this amount of filling. Watson, frying pan here. Get ready for a test crepe. I'm going to go grab my mini offset spatula. This thing will save you so many times. Eggs, milk, flour, sugar, salt, oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finding your sweet spot for the heat. So I can find it that right now it's still a little low on me. I can actually get it a little hotter. And then once you find that bubbling range, then you know you have the right heat for it. So that way once that one crepe comes out, you can pour your other crepe and it'll be done instantly. We're ready to make some blunces. So what you essentially do is we take our crepes and we make little cheese burritos. You can also use jam if you'd like or even potato, but today we're going to be doing my three cheese blend. So get lots of nice filling in there. I like a well stuffed I like a well stuffed lint. And this is one blintz. Okay. So as I'm folding these, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my filling kind of a little bit below center. And you're going to want to have roughly a quarter cup of filling. So what I do is I fold a little bit from the bottom, tuck in my sides like a little parcel and I fold that over on top. And then that makes your blitz. So I'll do that again here. I'm gonna take my filling below the center line, squish it down just slightly, fold my sides up, and fold it over. These make fantastic Sunday breakfasts. If you want to impress somebody, instead of just making crepes, make blintzes. It's like a crepe on steroids. <laughs> and if you make this cheese filling, people will always remember you. It's, it's like the best of cheesecake. I think I first had blintzes when I was probably, well, I don't know, five or six. My dad took me to Rain's Deli in Connecticut 
when we'd go visit family in Massachusetts, and they used to sell blintzes there. They don't make them from scratch anymore, unfortunately, but when they did, they were really good. And what we're going to do, once we're done with these and about two more crepes, is we're going to go fry these up in a little bit of butter. Your cardiologist can thank me later. <laughs> Okie dokie, now to head over to the stove. Okay. Here we have our knishes. Pan. You want to make sure to leave room to flip them around. I think I'm going to add, add three here, and that way, in case one of the seams opens up, you have room to kind of finagle it and reclose it with your spatula. And you can hear a nice little sizzle there, it lets you know that it's browning up. Of all times to go heavy with the butter, now is time to go heavy with the butter. I'm cooking these on a medium-high heat. The goal is to brown these up. You can see they're just browned. Just right. It's very delicate. That's why you need that much spatula. Yeah, okay. they are delicate. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just going to run and grab that crepe. Wow. Yep, just right. You just pour it off. College. It's in the college. Far out. Yeah. Lockies. Yeah. All right. So here we have our blintzes, and here we have our potato knishes. As you'll see, we have nice fried, butter fried, crispy, little tops of our blintzes over here, and our knishes. They have little beautiful baked bottoms. So thank you for joining me today while we made some fun little things on the Yiddish Bake Off, and I hope you all have a good night.